in this lecture, we're going to introduce the growth of an individual uh, rain droplet through the collision coalescence mechanism. We're going to have a, a model for the growth by collision coalescence. And in this model, we have the growth of an individual droplet, dmdt, is equal to pi r squared, which is the uh, cross-sectional area of a droplet that is falling. Um, and R1 is signifying that it's the radius of the collector droplet, the large droplet. And then we have V1 minus V2, which is the difference in the terminal velocity of the large collector droplet and the cloud droplets that are going to be collected. Uh, we have WL, which is the liquid water content of the cloud droplets in kilograms per meter cubed. And then we have the collection efficiency. And the collection efficiency is the product of the collision efficiency and the coalescence efficiency. And you'll recall from the last lecture that the terminal velocity of uh, cloud droplets is essentially equal to K1R squared. Uh, for large cloud droplets and drizzle droplets, um, that functional form of the terminal velocity changes to Vt is equal to K2R. And for rain droplets, uh, the large collector droplets often will end up using uh, Vt is equal to K3 times R to the 1 half. And I referred to the last lecture for the uh, values of the constants K1, K2, and K3. So this is a pretty straightforward model. It's the cross-sectional area of your droplet that's falling. In this case, we have a droplet here, and it has a cross-sectional area. Uh, as it's sweeping out this volume of pi r squared. Uh, we have the change, the difference in the fall speed of the individual droplets. So the large droplet has a greater fall speed than the smaller droplets that are uh, all moving downward. Uh, and the large droplet will overtake those uh, at the rate that is the difference of the fall speeds. The liquid water content essentially defines the total mass of water that's available in a given volume for the cloud droplets uh, that are being collected. Uh, and then we have the collection efficiency. And interestingly enough, the collection efficiency of a collector droplet does not equal one. A collection efficiency would be one if the volume that were swept out by this collector droplet, if that collector droplet collected everything that was in that volume that was swept out. But that's not the case. Uh, for example, if you have a small droplet that's towards the center line of the, the droplet, then as that big droplet approaches, the small droplet will try and follow the streamlines to go around the droplet. But in this case, uh, it was not able to do that, and it uh, impinged on the uh, large collector droplet. Likewise, a slightly larger droplet that's a little bit further away from the center line uh, also impinged. And then we also have a large droplet out here, uh, which doesn't follow the streamlines nearly as efficiently as the small droplets. And uh, this droplet was actually captured as well because it uh, hit the side of the collector droplet. When you have small droplets that are near the edge of the volume that are being swept out by the collector droplet, uh, one of two interesting things can happen. One is the droplet can actually follow the streamlines and completely miss the collector droplet, even though the droplet was within the volume that should have been swept out by the collector droplet. Another thing that can happen is that you can have uh, droplets that were inside the volume or even sometimes slightly outside of the volume uh, that uh, follow the streamlines and then get caught in a wake vortex at the back of the droplet and can actually impact the back side of the droplet. And it is possible for small droplets that are outside of the domain of what should have been collected by this collector droplet to basically follow and get collected on the back side of that droplet. Um, that does occur on occasion. And so what you have to do is you have to look at laboratory experiments for what the uh, collision efficiency is. And it's a function of the radius of the large droplet and the radius of the smaller droplets that are being collected. And it's essentially a lookup table um, that would allow you to be able to determine the, col the collision efficiency for droplet pairs. Uh, and I'll be giving you a handout that actually shows uh, that table uh, at a later date. 
uh, the next class period. But the collection efficiency is the product of the collision efficiency and the coalescence efficiency. And the coalescence efficiency basically says, what is the likelihood or the probability that two droplets will coalesce into a larger droplet if they do in fact collide? And that, generally speaking, is a very high probability, but there are particular droplet sizes where they collide at certain angles where the, uh, the droplets will actually bounce off of one another. Um, this was research that was done up uh, by Roland List uh, in Canada. Uh, showing that droplets can actually bounce off of each other, or sometimes they can actually break up into a lot uh, smaller droplets along the way. So we have this model for the continuous growth of a single droplet that is being growing by collision coalescence. And we can use the mass is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed rho L to transform this equation from a math, the rate of mass growth to the rate of uh, the radius growth. And if we do that transformation, we get dr by dt is equal to the difference in the terminal velocities of the droplets times the liquid water content of the cloud droplets times the uh, collection efficiency divided by 4 and the density of liquid water. Um, and there are, once again, charts or figures that can be used to determine both the uh, collision efficiency and the coalescence efficiency, and I'll provide those as handouts because uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to see and uh, just looking at the screen from, from this venue. 